the group stage is in the books. Um, well, not quite. Tunisia and Panama are in the last seconds. Uh, Tunisia is leading 2-1 and the goalkeeper is lying and uh, dying seemingly. Uh, but I guess we all know that it's going to end with a victory for Tunisia. If it doesn't, I'll update you in our life here. But that's not the game we want to talk about. Um, everyone was looking for Belgium, England, and most people knew it's going to be a weird game. And yes, it was a weird game. Um, it just so happened that seemingly second spot was a little bit more enticing. But just when you thought that Belgium really doesn't want to do anything, they took actually a sizable lead in the fair play um, ranking. Two yellow cards for Belgium. And at halftime, I mean, every, everyone was joking. The highlights of the first half, yeah, there was this kind of defensive plan on the England side. But the highlights were two yellow cards because those were the two most relevant uh, things happening. Uh, and in the second half, what happened? Belgium scored. England tried to get the equalizer. So the game, Tunisia, has won. So now the group stage is officially in the books. Um, England wanted to get the equalizer. So seemingly, England was... They were both going for first place <laughs> at one point. And then in the first half, they didn't want to go. And then uh, Belgium even got some stars in. England had two chances, uh, one they missed badly, I still think it was a corner kick, a Rashford against uh, Courtois, maybe it was, but it was a very slight, uh, yeah, there was another big chance, but it wasn't to be, and uh, Belgium then actually had good chances to make it 2 nothing and effectively killed the game off, and England didn't uh, put too much resistance, I mean, they didn't put Harry Kane in either, whereas uh, Belgium brought Ries Mertens. Now, the interesting thing on the game was not only that uh, because of the opponent's second place was more advantageous, it was also the um, stadiums you're going to play. The second place teams, if they make it to the final, they play three times in Moscow and once in St. Petersburg, where on the other side you have to travel to Sochi and some other places, Kazan, Sochi, Kazan, St. Petersburg and Moscow, I guess. So, yeah weird and something that I think can be avoided. I'm a little bit tired and it's I think I understand it most here but I'm a little bit tired that when there are two teams tied going in on points and it's only first and second place the game almost never is a good game because one team uh, first of all they are resting players like crazy and I it usually backfires. I've barely seen that a team that rests play in the last group stage um, actually performs well going into the tournament and I'm very very interested to see especially for us they were also resting players against Argentina uh, those players will have played for uh, more than a week that they wasn't have them playing I understand you want to not put out players there that have a that are on a yellow card but uh, just resting players that they don't get hurt I think history doesn't show that it's worth doing, I'm sorry to say. Uh, maybe warrant some further study, but I always get the feeling that teams that do that, they don't perform well in the next round, whereas teams that really had to go for it, they're not exhausted in the next game. Maybe the game after, but the next game, they're still sharp. Uh, that, that's something that I'm sure many of you have also observed. Uh, at least, I have to say, with Colombia being in first place, it made being uh, first in this group a little bit more enticing. Yes, if you're first in Group G, you will play Brazil in the uh, quarterfinals, given Brazil uh, beats Mexico, which everyone expects. And that's a tougher matchup. But I think you'd rather play against Japan than Colombia. Unless Japan is the really nasty opponent that they have been in the last three uh, games. So, you know, you can do it with one, uh, however you want, but I think most people would choose Col uh, Japan over Colombia if they had to pick one. 
And yeah, so I actually think England well, they will have a hard time maybe playing Colombia. But then if they beat them, it doesn't look too bad for them. I mean, Sweden, Switzerland, they should be within England's reach. And then you're in the semi-final. Of course, you got to beat Colombia first. Well, uh, Jersey matchups. Um, it was nice to see a classic European matchup again. Uh, white and navy shorts against the all red Belgium. Um, was really good looking and also the other matchup, although the shirts were a little bit more out there with all the piping or whatever patterns on there. Not as classic looking, but also it was it was a good matchup. Again, I don't blame Tunisia. I blame Panama for actually showing up with pretty boring um, kits. Uh, maybe, the, but you know. Panama got a goal, they even got the first lead of the World Cup, so yeah. Um, and Tunisia got third place, which they deserve. I think this group ended pretty much how everyone would rate, so there was no surprises. And yeah, kit matchups. I think I will make a review sometime soon about uh, the kit matchups so far, and maybe a, even a little preview of how I see they will happen in the next round. Again, let me know what you think about how Group G ended, I think it was probably the second most boring finish after Group C. <sighs> Maybe Group A, but Group A, I think there was a little bit more going on. I don't know. Toss up. Well, let's end it here. The group stage is in the books from now on. Loser goes home. Not sure if it will get more exciting games, but at least there will be suspense all over the place. <laughs> Until then. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.